Find the area of a triangle bounded by the x-axis, the line f of x is equal to 12 minus 1 third x, and the line perpendicular to f of x that passes through the origin. Alrighty then. So, what we need to do when we got a lot of things going on is take it piece by piece. So first let's draw a set of axes. We'll draw an x and a y. I'm going to bring the x-axis down a little bit because I think I'm going to need some space on the top for the y. So here's x, here's y. So first let's draw the lines that they're talking about. So it says uh, the first line here, triangle bounded by the x-axis. Now I already drew the x-axis, but why don't we color that? And uh, we'll make it red so it kind of stands out, all right? So that's one of the lines. Then the next line that tells f of x is equal to 12 minus 1 third x. Now remember, that might look a little unfamiliar, but remember that f of x is equal to 12 minus 1 third x is the same thing as writing f of x is equal to negative 1 third x plus 12. All I did was just rearrange those items. And remember, f of x is just like y, right? It's just like y. We've done that now. We've seen it in many videos. So doesn't this look like y is equal to mx plus b with the slope being 1 third and then the y-intercept being 12? Yes, right? Yes, it does. So now I can graph this, right? Now I can graph it. So just remember one thing when we talk about the slope. Remember, remember this, that the slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Now they gave us a fractional value. So watch. And it's negative, by the way. So it's negative one-third, okay? What I'm trying to show here is that I'm trying to show that the change in y is going to be 1, and the change in x is going to be 3. Now, we just have to figure out how to deal with this negative sign. Whenever they have a negative overall in the fraction, you know that that's the same thing as having a negative numerator and a positive denominator, or having a negative denominator and a positive numerator. So it does not matter which way or which place you place that negative sign. What I would suggest is don't leave it in the middle, of the fraction, place it on one of the um, sides, numerator or denominator. I'm going to leave it in the numerator, okay? Uh, it does not matter though. So what that will do is that will help me graph it, okay? Now remember, whenever you graph a, a linear line, you're always going to start with the y-intercept value. And the y-intercept, they told us, was 12. So I'm going to go 1, 2, I'm going to count all the way up, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm off the graph, 11, 12. So here it is, right? So let's extend that line a little bit. Okay. Now they tell us that the slope here is going to be negative 1 over 3. So what that means is the y, you're going to go down 1 because it's negative, And then the x, you're going to go over to the right 3 because it's positive. Okay? So... We'll go down one, so I'm back over to the graph, go down one, and then go to the right three. And it looks like there's the point. So I'm going to plot it right there. Boom. Same thing. Go down one, go over three. Boom. Go down one, over three. Boom. Okay? Boom. You remember what movie that's from? Anyway. Okay. Um... Let's plot the line. Let's plot the line. So here I'm going to try to do my best, draw it straight through those points. And hopefully that's good enough. Okay? So now, um, okay, cool. Then they said now we have to create a line that's now perpendicular to this f of x that we just drew. And it has to pass through the origin. Okay. So first thing is, they're actually telling me here, if you had to think about the equation of this new line, they're actually telling me the y-intercept by telling me the origin, okay? So y is equal to mx plus b. If this graph passes through the origin right here, where does it cross the y-axis? Well, it crosses it at the origin, right? At y is equal to zero. They told me the y-intercept. So now I know at least that this is going to be mx plus zero. Oh, cool. So see you later. Just mx now. Okay. In order for me to graph this, I got to know, well, what am I doing? Going up three, going over four, going up 10, right? 
going down 14 I got to know the slope now this is the key they said that the line this new line that I'm going to draw is perpendicular to the blue line I drew what does that mean you got to memorize this what does that mean in terms of the slope that means the slope of the perpendicular line that I'm going to create here is the negative reciprocal. Okay? Negative reciprocal. So if the slope of this original line here was negative one third, then the negative reciprocal of that is going to be negative, and the reciprocal of this is going to be negative three over one. It's a double negative, so it will cancel and it will become positive. I know that might sound confusing there, so just think about it this way. That's the math way to look at it. Okay, just think about it this way. The or or instead of saying negative reciprocal, just say opposite reciprocal. That's fine, meaning opposite sign. So whatever sign this slope is originally, if it's negative, it's going to become positive. If this slope were positive initially, then it become negative. Okay, that's what it means. So you can think about it as opposite reciprocal if you want. But I, it's better to think about it as negative reciprocal, technically. So in any case, uh, let's think about it as negative reciprocal. So the reciprocal of this is going to be 3 over 1. And then what's the negative sign of a negative? It's a positive, right? Or the opposite sign. And that's it. Here's the slope. Okay? And now this is the new equation. So the slope here is going to be 3 over 1. And remember, the change in y is always the change in over the change in x. And therefore, that's... The 3 represents the change in y, the 1 represents the change in x, and now I know how to actually graph this thing now. So notice they're both positive, the 3 is positive, the 1 is positive, and therefore I'm going to y being positive goes up, and when x is positive it goes to the right. Okay, if it were the opposite, if y were negative, then I go down, and if x were negative I would go to the left. Okay, so go up 3 it tells us, so 1, 2, 3, right, and then go over 1. So I'm right here. Okay, same thing again. Go up three, one, two, three, over one. Up three, boom, 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 over one. I'll do one more, up three, over one. Okay, and let's plot this. That looks fairly close. I'm going to try that again. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so now I drew that one, right? And this one would, by the way, keep going, but I just didn't show it. And uh, because I know it's bounded by that x-axis. And then, um, it's yeah, so now we're, uh, so now we are, we are almost good. All right, so let me get rid of this, some of this stuff here, right? So let's erase this. Let's just extend the line and then we'll be able to do it, okay? All right. So we probably don't even need to really do this, but I like to look at it visually. So what I'm going to do, extend this line all the way down. Take now this line. And extend that all the way down as well but I got to make sure and I'm actually gonna run off the page okay one second I'm just making sure it kind of lines up everywhere all right that's actually good so you might notice now even though it just ran off the page you might notice where this is gonna intersect all right, so it looks like it's almost gonna intersect at that box over there but I don't know whether it will or not so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do a little math to figure out whether this blue line uh, intersect where the uh, blue line intersects that x-axis okay so the area of the triangle that they're talking about by the way is going to be this thing it's this it's this triangle right now right they're talking about the area bounded by the well that's a little messy right they're talking about the area bounded by those three graphs okay so that's the triangle i'm looking at all right so if i had to kind of put this maybe in a single color now why don't we do this all in just going to put the lines in green or something. All right, so that. And it's going to be the area of that green triangle that I just uh, created. Okay. So remember the area of the triangle is going to be one half area. It's a mix between a change and an area. One half base times height. So I got to know the base and I got to know the height. All right. So again, I kind of need, you know, if you look at this, the highest point here is going to be right here. Okay. So the height here is going to be this particular length. In order for me to figure out that length, I need to figure out then the y, in, the y value of this particular coordinate where those two graphs intersect. 
what is the y value, right? So I got to figure out where they intersect. Now, in order to figure out where they intersect, that's like a system system of equations problem, right? These are these are kind of long problems. So what we need to do is we need to take our two equations, okay? Our two equations were for those two lines, f of x is equal to 12 minus one third x. And then the equation of the other one we found before, remember it was three over one or just three x, right? That was the equation of this uh, green line. So now what I need to do is I need to basically find the y value, okay? It might be easiest though to first, I mean we can, and remember f of x just means y, okay? You can just substitute that on in. And um, because essentially it's the same thing, right? Instead of calling this axis that I have right here, this linear line, uh, vertical line, y, I can call it f of x. So it really doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do first, since this is already solved for y, I'm going to set these two then equal to one another. Because I know, what I know is that these two graphs now intersect at the same point, And therefore, the y value and the x value should be the same. Since this is already, well, yeah, since this is already solved for y, I'm just going to plug them. I'm going to set them both equal to one another. So we're basically going to have, I know the y value of this particular graph, let's say, will equal then the y value of this particular graph. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to substitute now this value on in. And then I'm going to substitute this value on in. So notice, lo and behold, we're going to have 12 minus 1 third x is equal to then 3x. I have one equation with one unknown. I love this because I can simply solve it, right? So this is plus then one third x. Three plus one third is going to be three and a third. So you can just write it that way. It doesn't really matter. Three and a third x. You can convert that to an improper fraction if you wanted, which would have been 10 over three x. And now to solve this for x, right? Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So you'd have to multiply both sides by three over 10. So this basically then becomes 12 times three over 10 is gonna be equal to x. And you can now simplify this if you need, right? The 10 could simplify down to a five. This could simplify down to a six. Six times three is 18 and it's 18 over five. Oh, great. So I know now the x coordinate of this point. I know that the x coordinate of this point up here is gonna be 18 over five. But now I need to find the y. Right? So you can take now either equation. There's one that's easier than the other. Okay? So what I'm going to do is just erase some of this work. And <clears throat> I am going to now simply uh, take that second equation because it's easier. It's just y is equal to 3x. And take my x value now that I just found and plug it in. Why do I do that? Well, I know that when x here for this particular green line, okay, is uh, equal to 18 over five, I wanna find the y value of that. So that's why I'm plugging in the 18 over five. So when we do that now, right, there's really nothing to reduce. So we have to take three multiplied by our 18, and that works out to be 50, sounds like 54, right? And that's 54 over five. You can convert these to decimals if you wanted, but that's the height. Okay, so 54, that's the y value, which also represents the height of this line. So, huh, so I finally found the height. So let's plug that in, 54 over 5. And now, since I know that number is messy, this number is probably going to be messy out here where these two intersect, right? So, and by the way, you know, what is 54 over 5? You know, that's almost just shy of 11. It's just shy of 11, right? So let's make sure that that makes sense. Here, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, just shy of 11. Huh, looking pretty good, all right? Now for where this thing, where these two intersect now, because I need to find the length then of this particular base. Right, so I need to figure out where they intersect over at that side so I can figure out the length. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to use this equation, okay, because that's the line that I'm uncertain of where it's going to intersect that x axis. So, watch 
what we do here is we do f of x, yeah, just call it y again. y is equal to 12 minus 1 third x. Now you already know what this point will be. Okay, you know one thing, well, I should say you know one thing about that point at least. Well, you might know both if you really, you know, if you're doing all this mental math in your head. Um, but we know at, at a minimum that the x value, excuse me, the y value of that coordinate will be zero. Right? I don't know what the x is. The x is going to be some, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be some positive number. But I know y is zero there. So what I can do now in my equation is plug in zero for y. Why don't we do the math inside the triangle? Zero is equal to 12 minus one third x. Now what that's going to tell me is if I can solve this thing now for x, it will then give me the value of y. Excuse me, it will give me the value of x. What? Sorry. It's early. So this is equal to 12. So let's sub add the one third on over. So this is one third x is equal to 12. Simply then multiply both sides by three to cancel, right, the fraction. And 12 times three is going to be 36. Okay, so it actually did work out nicely. So 36 here is going to be the base. So now all I need to do is plug that on into the thing. 36. This is 54 over 5. And it looks like, I mean, we could probably just find, we can probably get a decimal answer here. But what I'll do is, uh, so 36, we'll multiply that by 54. And then we'll divide that by essentially 10, right? Because it's the 2 times the 5. So this is 194.4, which would be the same thing as saying, let's convert that to a fraction, 972 over 5. 972 over 5. Okay? And that basically does that. So this would be the answer. That's the area. Wow. All right. So nice problem. What was that, an hour? Okay. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.